if you want to go ahead and start. Okay, cool. All right. Hey guys, like Emma said, um, my name is Jesse Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid. Um, and we normally teach crafting classes, which of course this will be as well, but we are super excited to have the opportunity with Michael's um, to sort of debut and present to you guys a brand new product line that is literally being set in Michael's as we speak. So in the next day, the next couple of weeks, make sure to check out your local Michael's um, and you'll see this beautiful, beautiful line of products that we've been working on. So um, if you guys are fans of sign making or if you like to have that sort of look in your house, um, whether you like the personalized look or you know all the different varieties I'm about to show you, this is a super um, beautiful and super easy product line to make amazing signs to put in your home. So like Emma said, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get into it. Um, some of these beautiful products that we have here for you today. So as you can see here that I'm holding in my hand, um, really the, the biggest, the bulk of the product line are these beautiful mesh stencils. So um, if you've stenciled before, you know, you need the stencil brush and do the pouncing motion and sometimes it can bleed, you know, it takes a little bit of skill to do that. Um, but with these new mesh stencils, um, it's basically foolproof. It is so, so super easy to get beautiful, crisp lines um, without having to paint them by hand. Um, so another great feature for these mesh stencils is that unlike normal stencils, which have bridges um, and things like that and kind of bolder areas to help hold them together, you can get some really super intricate, amazing detail, as you can see here in this design right here, um, that you just can't get in regular stencils. It looks like it's either printed or hand painted. Um, and again, like I'll show you in a couple of minutes, it is super easy to use. Absolutely anybody can do it. So like I said, if we want to switch to overhead real quick, we've got so many amazing designs that are going to be coming to your local Michael's store. Um, so there's something for everybody. We've got them in sort of different themes. We've got, you know, bless our nest, family, sweet family, um, create your own magic, um, love, sweet love, just anything you could you can think of. And we also have amazing um, letter packs so you can personalize it yourself. So you can put your family's name, um, you can put you know, your, your children's name for their rooms, you can give it as gifts, you can put them on tags for Christmas. I mean, the possibilities are absolutely endless. You can do just about anything with these amazing stencils. And I could just keep sitting here and popping them in front of you, but there's just dozens and dozens of designs. And Jesse, I love how they all come in different fonts too. They can really, there's such, there's such a variety of different stencils. There's really one to match your unique style. There's some more folk art. I know, and they're so trendy. Like the, you don't have to worry about just like the old mailbox stencils that kind of have like, you know, the serif fonts and things like that. They're just so trendy. They have really great fonts. Like Emma said, you can get looks that look like they're hand lettered, which is, you know, obviously super trendy. That is not going away anytime soon, this beautiful hand lettered look. And there's no, um, there's no breaks in it. There's no bridges, like we call it in stencils, where there's like a little spot that has to connect it just to keep the stencil from falling apart. It's just all really beautiful thin lines and details, and it's so easy to use. Um, we also have really beautiful design motifs to accent your stencils. So if you're doing some sort of family name sign, we've got lots of little um, mesh stencils like these here that you can use to create your own beautiful work of art um, and have it personalized to your home and your family. So. Like I said, the possibilities are just absolutely endless. Um, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how to use these amazing mesh stencils um, if it's something you're interested in. Um, and don't forget, as we go, Emma's there to read me any questions. So if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the chat. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'd love to hear if you have any questions about this brand new line of products. All right. So since we have this brand new, beautiful line of mesh stencils, of course, um, we need a special paint to go with them. So. You know, your normal acrylic paint will work, but we have developed a specially formulated paint called um, stencil paste, we're calling it. And it's a little bit thicker um, to go with these mesh stencils. So it just has a little bit more body than our regular folk art paint. Um, and it just really sticks into those areas better. It makes it really easy. To, um, if you've done silk screening before, this might be kind of similar to that. You might be using some of the same skills, but it really falls into those, um, the design areas really well and kind of grabs on and fills in those gaps. So I can show that again in just a minute. Um, we've also got amazing tools. So um, we've got the squeegee tool. So lots of different ways you can apply this, the, um, the stencil paste. We've got a squeegee tool, uh, or I'm sorry, the silicone tool. We've got this little brush tool that's great for sort of applying the paint to it. And then we've also got different sizes of the squeegee tool. So this is where you just sort of pull it down. Um, but again, I'll show you guys all of this in just a couple of minutes. Um, we have, like I said, we were talking about the stencil pastes. We have amazingly beautiful colors for these. So we have kind of put together um, boxes of these colors. So this one's called Seaside. So it's really beautiful. Um, if you like that aesthetic for your home, but it's got really beautiful reds and blues. 
would even be great for like 4th of July decor and things like that. Um, but just sort of farmhousey seaside ocean colors. We also have, this one is called floral. So you can see the colors here, it's reds and greens. You can do beautiful designs with these, um, great for spring and summer um, and making designs like that for your home. We also have, this one is our lush greens. So this one's great. I showed you, we have all of these really pretty um, sort of greenery elements and florals and things like that. So this is really great for signs like those. And then lastly, this pack is a little bit bigger. I'm trying not to knock everything over. Um, this one is called our essentials pack. So this just kind of has all the colors of the rainbow. So whatever your decor looks like, um, there's definitely colors in here for you. It's got of course white and black, which are essentials and then reds, yellows, greens, blues, purples. Um, and you can mix these, of course, make you know custom colors for your home if you have something really specific in mind. Um, but we've put together these beautiful color palettes for you just to make it easy, just kind of grab and go and make whatever signs you need. Um, so also we have, in addition to these beautiful little colors, we also have some larger colors. So of course, everybody loves like that farmhouse, black and white sign sort of look, the hand lettering and things like that that you see at all the craft shows um, and you see for sale in um, home decor stores. So. We have large tubes of the white and the black too. So you can base coat with the white and stencil with the black or vice versa. Um, but we know of course, you'll be wanting to use these colors probably the most in your sign making. So we have some larger um, tubes of these as well that you can go ahead and grab. Hey, Jesse, Kathy has a question. Uh, they sure. wanna know, do we sell the small tubes individually? We do not, they're so tiny. Um, it's really just more value for you to buy them um, in a pack like this. Um, so that's why we kind of wanted to, you know, we know the smaller packs are a little bit specific as far as color palettes, but that's why we have this essentials pack. So you can have everything you need um, and more really. You'll be able to mix the colors um, to, to your liking, but no, we don't have them sold individually just because it's way more value for um, bang for your buck in a large pack like this. And I feel like we, we you know, we custom picked each color palette so specifically to match so many different um, aesthetics that people have in their home. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, so yeah, any more questions, Em? No, I think we're good for now. So Jesse, I think we're having a little bit of trouble with the overhead. So if you could just um, do your Dylan front facing and you show off the product for a little bit while Dylan figures that out. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so like I said, um, here, I'll show you some of the projects that we've made. So um, we have some uh, classes coming up with Michaels. We're gonna show you how to make specific projects using these um, stencil packs, these mesh stencils. Um, so make sure to keep a lookout on the Michaels Community Classroom schedule, just right where you signed up for this one, because in the next um, few weeks through April, we're going to have um, a lot of classes to show you exactly how to use these, and like I said, to make specific projects. So you can see here, this is a really cute Michaels surface, um, and we used one of our larger packs here. I didn't even show these yet. We have these giant packs, too, to make large signs for your home, and um, we've got letter packs, and we've got, you know, words and um, different design elements. So um, you can pick up one of those letter packs and make a sign just like this. This is amazing for, you know, if you're moving into a new home or for your front door or to give as a gift. This is such a great gift idea for birthdays, Christmas, um, really any time of year. Um, but it's just so fun to be able to, to customize something like this and have sort of that hand painted look without actually having the skills to hand paint it, which I know a lot of us do not. We also have coming up this really cute little Easter project. So you can see how adorable this font is, how incredibly trendy it is. Um, and we use some really fun, bright colors from the packs that we did mixing and all kinds of things. Um, this somebody loves you. So this is another class that will be coming up on the Michaels Community Classroom schedule. So keep an eye out for this. Um, and I just want to draw your attention too. We, you know, we taped off the bottom and we painted it right with the stencil paste. So you don't have to use any other paints. Everything you buy in the pack, um, you can use for your sign. So we did this cute little block of color. Um, and then I don't know if you can see now these cute little tiny hearts. That is also one of the, um, the mesh stencils. So there's some little patterns in there too for making sweet little signs like this. So I just keep saying it, the possibilities are endless. You can do so, so many things with this. And then the thing with the stencil paste is a little goes a long way. Right, yes. So the, the, the pigment is so concentrated and it's so mm -hmm. th uh, thick and creamy and kind of glidable when you use your um, whatever really tool smooth. you're using, you really don't need a lot of the cream. So it'll last you for a really long time. That's a really great point. Because even when we first saw this product line, when they brought it into our studio, we were like, wow, we're so excited. A brand new line just for sign making, because we have always loved sign making here at Platt, of course. Um, we were like, the paints are kind of little, but Emma's exactly right. This will last you so many signs. You're not going to believe it. 
And the reason it's in the tube is, first of all, because it's a little bit thicker than our normal paint, but also because it's really easy to squirt out just as much as you need at a time without having to have, you know, a big pool of paint and then not using all of it. You can just squirt out the tiniest bit and it stays in its little dollop because it's nice and thick um, and it'll last you a long, long time. You can do many signs with one of these um, color packs. Um, and like Emma said, it's super opaque. It's like one and done. You do not need to do multiple coats. You know, one little swipe, which again, I'm going to show you in just a minute or two. And it's completely covered. You don't have to worry about going back and I'll give your stenciling. You might need, you know, you'll be stenciling, stenciling and let it dry and stencil some more to make sure you have full coverage. That's not an issue with these mesh stencils and with the stencil paste. So Jessica, I think you touched on this a little bit earlier, but someone had a great question. They wanted to know, um, does it mix well to create a variety of different colors? So maybe through the demo, if you could show us how it mixes together. Absolutely, I'd love to. Yeah, it mixes really well, just like any of our folk art paints. Um, you can mix this, you know, with a brush or a palette knife or even one of these squeegees would be great for mixing paint. Um, but yeah, you know, you could mix a red and a white to get pink and that sort of thing. But I can definitely show you that when we get started. Um, just really quick, another great thing about these mesh stencils I want to show you. Um, this is another class we have coming up on the Michaels Community Classroom page, this cute little eat box for your kitchen. Um, and I just want to let you guys know this is layered. So um, this plaid here in the background is one of our mesh stencils. And then we let it dry and right over it, we put the word eat. Um, so you can just do really cool different things like, like layering and piecing stencils together and just kind of make your own design and personalize it so that it fits your family and your home. So again, keep an eye out if you're interested in learning how to layer the stencils, make sure to look out for this class that's going to be coming up in the next few weeks. Um, all right, any more questions before I go ahead and, and kind of get demonstrating? I don't think right now. Okay, cool. So um, are we good on the overhead now? Okay, cool. So we want to switch to overhead. Um, I have this really cute little um, wood plaque that I bought at Michael's. Michael's has tons of great wood surfaces for sign making. This one is from Michael's. All of these you see here are from Michael's. Um, and I grabbed this cute little mesh stencil. It says, each day is a gift. And as you can see, it's a little bit big for this. Um, and we really want to make sure that um, our stencil is adhesive, adhering, you know, flush to the surface. We don't want any bumps because the paint won't reach there. So the great thing is they're super easy to trim. So I'm just with a pair of regular scissors. I'm just going to trim off the larger air edges so that it will fit nice and snug into this cute little framed wood plaque that we bought at Michael's. So you can see now it fits perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead. We could have base coated this, you know, we left it raw, but you can absolutely, you know, paint it white or any color you want before you put the stencils on. You can see here, I'm going to pull it off and you can see it's, it has, has this adhesive backing, this adhesive backing, excuse me, um, that you want to hang on to, to put it back on. So I'm going to lay it on my surface. I'm going to make sure I have it placed where I want it, nice and centered. And I'm going to press down and I want to make sure that everything is pressed down flush, just like I said. So it is adhesive. It has um, a, a low tack adhesive. So um, sometimes adhesive stencils, like the Mylar ones and things are super um, sticky. This is not super sticky, uh, but it is reusable. So I'll show you when we're done. Um, we're going to paint it and then we're going to put it right into the water and it, let it dry. And then it'll be, you can use it many, many times. So they're not one and done. You can definitely, it's a nice little investment to um, invest in these signs. You can make many signs for gifts or for your home or you know, for selling, whatever it is that you like to do using these stencils. So again, I'm going to make sure all of my details are down. Um, you can always use tape if you want to like block off some of the areas, but I'm not going to worry about it for this one. So Jesse, Don had a really great question. They want to know yeah. are stencils reusable. They are reusable. Yeah. So like I said, I'll show you right after this. Um, we're going to pull it off and we're going to stick it in water right away. And then you just want to gently rinse it with some um, soap and water or just water. I like to use just water, but soap won't hurt it. Uh, and then we'll lay it to dry and then we'll just stick it right back on the backing and it's completely reusable. So the adhesive will reactivate. You can use it dozens of times. And then Kay said um, they jumped on a little late and they wanted to know what this pack is so they can find it at Michael's. So right now Jesse is showcasing this brand new folk art sign shop product line that is launching at Michael's today. So you should see it in your local Michael's store in the, within the next few weeks or days. Yeah, the Michaels employees are literally putting it on the shelves right now as we speak. So make sure to check these out. Um, you probably haven't seen it before if you've been shopping at your local Michaels or online, um, but it will be there in the next few weeks. So just keep an eye out if you're interested in some of these products. And like I said earlier, we have some classes coming up in the next few weeks on Michaels Community Classrooms, showing you how to make really specific um, projects that are seasonal and sort of personalized. So um, just using different techniques with these mesh stencils. So make sure to keep an eye out for those too if you're interested. Yeah, All right. so 
just to touch on that, Jesse, so these mesh stencils are kind of similar to silk screening. Like if you see people use um, silk, silk screen technology with t-shirt making or um, any mm -hmm. other kind of textile making, Emily wanted to know if you're doing a large project or using the same stencil multiple times, do you still recommend washing it or wiping it down between each use? Yes, you want to make sure. So, okay. So the thing about these stencils is I was talking about how they have such fine detail. So you can see how thin some of these little areas are. Um, and the thing is, there's sort of a mesh material that's um, kind of keeping those together and allowing those details to be exposed without having to put bridges in the design. Um, so those can clog up with the stencil paste. So that's why as soon as you're done, you want to make sure if you're not by a sink, you want to have a little bowl of water here like I do. So you can rinse it immediately between uses. Um, yeah, you do not want to let this the paint dry in there because that will ruin your mesh stencil. You want to keep that detail so you can use it over and over and over again and, and continue to have those nice clean designs. And Jesse, will you hold that up a little bit closer to the camera? See that yeah. each day, like a lot of traditional stencils, that little, um, I don't know what you would even call it, but that little uh, part in the A, that part yeah. is- It would be attached. Yeah, that would fall out of a traditional stencil. There mm -hmm. is like tiny, 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 almost like a grid in, this, in the stencil that's allowing all these pieces to stay together. So you get yeah. those really awesome fine details. Right. So that's what that's where the mesh sort of term comes in. It's yeah. sort of like this fine little um, fabric almost as holding it together. And so you don't have to have the bridges and the designs and we don't want that to get clogged up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get painted because I know everybody's probably itching to see how you actually use these stencils. They're like, okay, we've heard about it in theory. We wanna see you do it. Um, all right, so the color I've got here, you can see I trimmed it and I put it on my nice smooth wood surface. I made sure it was nice and flush. Um, and I have this really pretty red color here. It's called Scarlet. I'm going to open it up and put just a little bit. You don't need very much on my plate here. And I'm going to use one of these brushes. So um, you can see here, these are specially designed to be used with our mesh stencils. They're a little bit low. We've got, um, when you buy, it'll come in this larger one and this smaller one for, you know, details or for larger areas. But I'm going to go ahead and, and show you guys how to use this brush. So I'm going to grab the larger one and I'm just going to grab some paint on my brush and I'm just going to pull down. So you can be pretty generous with it. Just pull down and make sure that you have paint in all the um, design areas that you want to have the paint in. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more paint. You can see I'm putting a little bit as I go because I wanna make sure I save my paint. Yeah, look how little that that little daub is. That I know, it's like the tiniest, tiniest bit of paint, but it's gonna cover this. This is a fairly large design as far as signs go. You know, it's a good, a good medium sized sign. Um, but the paint just really goes a long way. And so and you could definitely use multiple colors if you wanted to. I'm only using one color right now, but I can show you in a minute if you did want to use multiple colors, um, how you could do that using these tools. Yeah, so Jess, we have a couple questions and comments. Emily said, thank you, sorry for so many questions. Stencils have been a pain in the past for me. I'm excited about these. So that's why we're here, you guys. We are so excited to show you all about this product line. Mm -hmm. So the more questions, the merrier. We're happy to answer all yeah. of the questions. It's rare, um, it's awesome that, you know, Michaels gives us the opportunity with the Michaels Community Classrooms to kind of debut a product line like this. We don't usually get to show you guys, you know, live on air, um, what you can do with some of the new products that we have in Michaels. So this is a really fun opportunity for us. Yeah. And go ahead and get, really quick, let me just do this um, reveal before it dries in. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna rinse my brush off. Oop. And we're gonna peel it up and you'll see this really fun reveal. Oop, get it, the edge. So you wanna do it quickly because you don't want to dry, but look at that detail. So as you can see, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it straight into the water and I wanna get it wet because I don't want any of that paint to dry on my um, mesh stencil. So if you have a sink at home, if you're like working in your kitchen or something um, or near a bathroom, feel free to just you know pop over to the sink and rinse it off. Um, but I usually don't work that close to a sink. So I like to keep um, like a little a bowl or a Tupperware here filled with water for my stencils in. Um, or if I'm using like one of these like big guys, one of these giant designs, I'll have like a little casserole dish or something with water so I can just lay it in there and get it nice and rinsed. But you do want to make sure that you um, rinse your stencil immediately because you do not want any of the paint drying in those beautiful, beautiful details. So you can see here how easily it rinses off. Mm -hmm. it comes up really that, nicely. That red color is popping. Heart oh, good. <laughs> good, good. I'll show you the details in just a second. I'll make sure I get my stencil nice and rinsed. And so while you're gonna... rinsing that, Jesse, um, Kathy okay, had a right question. Here to dry. 
they want to know the first time you use the stencil, do you need to fuzz the adhesive? I've never heard that term fuzz before. Fuzz the adhesive by placing it on a cloth or surface a few times to soften the adhesive? No, you do not. So um, that's the thing. There, it's a low tack adhesive, so it's not going to be like super sticky. Um, you will be able to stick it on like round surfaces. Like if you wanted to do like a hurricane base or something like that, um, it's just sticky enough where it will stick to something like that. But it's almost more of like a cling, if that makes sense. It's not like super like gooey sticky like some adhesive stencils are. It won't leave behind any residue or anything like that. So you don't have to. I like that term fuzz it. I know exactly what you mean. I do it all the time with like tape and stuff. Um, no, you don't have to worry about that with these. Um, so let me show you guys just some of the detail we got. Look at that is up. So you just really can't get that with like typical stencils. Is it in, in shot? Yeah. You just can't really get that with like typical stencils. Um, just like look at these like fine lines. Like you, you know, it looks like it was hand painted or like I said, like it was printed or something. Which you can just get this right at home. It's so easy to do. And so Amy said, they're just tuning in. They missed the first bit, wondering what type of paint is being used. So we are using um, the folk art stencil paste um, that is in the folk art sign shop line that is launching at Michael's today. So we're here to talk all about folk art sign shop, all of our really awesome mesh stencils. That's what the packaging looks like. Jesse has it right there. Um, and all of the stencil cream, uh, stencil paste that we have along with the mesh. Yeah. Stencil. So just to reiterate, like we said in the beginning, um, the, the difference between this and just typical folk art, you know, acrylic paint is this is a little thicker and that's because you really want it to um, to get into those areas of the mesh stencil in those details, you know, without bleeding or anything. Right where it goes is where it stays because it's nice and thick. It has a lot of body to it. You could see when I put it on the plate. Um, so that's why we developed like a little bit thicker of this like stencil paste for you guys, just because it works so, so beautifully with these brand new mesh stencils that are setting today at Michael's. Um, and just really quick to let you guys know, um, I rinsed off my, my mesh stencil right away, and then I like to just lay it, you know, face down with the sticky side up on a paper towel. It just takes a few minutes for the water to dry, and then I would go ahead, once it's dry, um, you can even hit it with a hairdryer if you're impatient like me, and I would just go ahead and stick it right back on the backer and just put it with the rest of my craft stuff, and it is perfectly ready to use um, many more times. So yeah. So some people, Jesse, have, um, have a couple of questions regarding the permanence of the paint. So the permanence of this paint is similar to the permanence of a regular like folk art acrylic paint. Right. Yeah, it is permanent. It's not washable, if that's what you're wondering. Um, yeah. While it's still wet, of course, if you get it on your hands and stuff, that's totally fine. It's water-based and non-toxic, so you can just wash your hands. But if it gets in your clothes, it is permanent, just like any other acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. um, it, it won't come out of clothes. So just, you know, wear an apron, be careful. But um, like if it was to get on this tabletop while it's still wet, you could just wipe it off with some like warm soapy water. Again, like Emma said, just like you do with any of your um, acrylic paints at home. Yeah, some people had a question, like if you got it at the edge of your stencil, um, could you wipe it off of your project? You could just touch it up like you would with any other acrylic paint, wipe, you know, wipe it off yeah. as fast as you can. And I like to, um, you know, use tape around the edges too. If it's something that's like really close to the edge, I'll put some like stencil tape around it just to mask that off to keep that from happening. Um, but just like any other stencil, you would do the same thing. You'd want to mask off any areas where you don't want paint if you're a little bit worried about that. So let's move on. Let's do some more, um, some more mesh stenciling, shall we? Sorry, Jess, we have so many great questions. Some oh, that's okay. I love it. Yeah. So, um, like, just like you were talking about, someone wanted to know, um, do you need to tape to adhere the, uh, the stencil down to your surface? You do not because, um, they have a low tack. So here, I'll show you, um, when you peel it off, it's really thin. It's a little bit sticky. You can see that. It's not super sticky. It's not like really gooey. It won't leave a residue, but it is sticky enough to stick onto your surface without any tape. So that's kind of what keeps it nice and clean. It's really adhered to your surface. So none of the paint will bleed. Uh, it's like I said in the beginning, it's kind of foolproof. If you're someone who's tried stenciling before because you really love the whole idea of like making signs and customizing and things like that, um, but you kind of struggle because it does bleed if you don't have a lot of practice, this is the product for you because it will not bleed. As long as you have it pressed down, you know, nice and firm, it's, the paint's not going anywhere except for where you want it, which is awesome. Yeah, so Jesse, Julie wanted to know, can you use this on fabric? Um, yeah, you can absolutely use this on fabric. It works really well. So um, like Emma said, we were kind of inspired by silk screens with this product, um, just to make it simpler for crafters to make signs at home. So um, yeah, again, you wanna make sure your fabric is nice and flat. You know, you wanna iron out any wrinkles to make sure you have a nice smooth surface, but this will stick really nicely onto fabric just like it will onto any of these smooth surfaces. And then one more question before you move on. A lot of people wanna know um, like the best way to seal this if you wanted to put your project outside. Um, great question. So this is not um, like an outdoor paint, but you can always seal it with like a Mod Podge Outdoor or something. That's my go-to sealer for outdoor projects. So 
Um, you know, it's really not designed to be outside for like, as far as like UV, you know, resistance and things like that. I can't promise that it won't fade, you know, after months in the sun and things like that. But as far as like water resistant, you, uh, the outdoor Mod Podge really is great at sealing acrylic paint for outdoor use. So yeah, if you wanted to put some sort of sign in your garden or something, um, I say go for it. Again, I can't promise about the UV resistance, but the outdoor Mod Podge will keep it, um, keep it safe and keep it from like cracking and peeling and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so now I really want to show you guys, um, as you can see here, I have this really cute alphabet stencil. So you've got tons of options for alphabets here. You can see you've got this really cute, like a chunky serif font. You got this cute sort of like hand lettered looking um, design. So um, what I love about these is you can personalize it. So you can do your family's name. You know, you can do a friend's name. You can make gift tags using these, um, but you can just make any words you want, which is of course really fun to, to customize. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can easily piece these together. So um, what word should we do? What's something that we have all the letters for? Let's do love. How about that? Awesome. And guys, keep an eye out because we have a lot of classes in the near future um, showcasing a bunch of different techniques you can use with this new line of product. Things like layering and piecing together stencils and just some color lessons um, using all the different stencil paste that we have at Michael's. So keep an eye yeah. out for all those classes. Absolutely. So here I'm just going to do a quick little four letter word just to kind of demonstrate to you guys how it would work. We don't want to be here all day. Um, but yeah, so you can make your name. My last name is Jennings. So for example, if I wanted to um, use the mesh stencil to make my name here, I would need two ends, of course. So like, just like I showed you, it's really easy to reuse. So you would just lay out your word. You know, I would do the end, I'd rinse it off, dry it really quick with a hairdryer or something, put it back on and do the other end. Easy peasy. You don't have to worry about having like multiple packs of stencils because they are super, super reusable. So Jesse, Kathy had a question. If you are going to save the letters, do you want to cut the backing as well? Or do you, is it That's easy to put it back on there when you cut it like that? That's a great question. It's optional. Um, so the way that they're designed, it is all one piece on here. So that's why I'm cutting them. So if it's easier for you to leave them on, you could take a craft knife and just, you know, uh, lightly score yeah. like an exacto blade or something, lightly score it. So you're not going through the backside. And then you could peel them off like a sticker sheet. Um, but, you know, I always cut them apart just because I just like, I just like doing that better. That's my preference. And then I'll put them in like a gallon size Ziploc bag or something to store them for later just to keep them all together. But that's a great question. There's, there's, it's kind of optional. It's kind of up to you, what, whatever you like to do. Okay, so I've got my letters here. So again, you can do any word. You could do your name. You could do a pet name. It's, it's you know, the possibilities are endless. So I'm going to pull off my L. I'm going to put it here. And I'm not going to do anything fancy with lining it up. Uh, if you want to get some tips and tricks about how to line up stencils so if they are perfect when you're doing something like this, we do have a class coming up where we're going to show you how to make this family name sign. This is the Jenkins. So we're going to give you lots of tips and tricks about how to keep it super level, how to keep all of your spacing perfect. So um, if you are curious about that, you want to have more information about doing things like that, make sure to keep an eye out for that class and we will give you the whole scoop on how to make a project like that. Right now, I'm just kind of kind of eyeball it just to kind of give you an idea of how you can piece these mesh stencils together um, to really personalize it and customize it. So Jesse, Doug had a question um, a little while ago. He wanted to know um, how long would you recommend leaving the paint on the stencil before you um, remove the stencil from the surface? I say as quick as possible. So like I said before, at the really fine details here, I can show you now, you can kind of see so you can see the wood here and you can see how it's a little cloudy here. That's the very fine mesh you're seeing. So that's where the paint is going through uh, and that's what's holding the whole stencil together. So we do not want to let paint um, dry inside that fine mesh. So I just immediately pop it into water. You, you never want to let it sit too long on here if you can help it because again, it just makes it harder to get that paint out and you don't want it to dry in there because again, it is permanent. So um, I say immediately, as soon as you get that paint on there, pull it right off. And if you're doing a large design, you're going to want to work a little bit quickly. And so then Kathy wanted to know, um, will this, uh, I, she said, I love to paint pots. Will this work on like terracotta? A hundred percent. This would be great on terracotta. Um, we, I personally consider terracotta like more of a porous surface. So, you know, we've got our multi-surface paints that work um, on a variety of surfaces like glass and metal and things like that, just in our regular folk art line. Um, and this is just like really like a nice acrylic paint. But since terracotta is so porous, I really think that any paint works on terracotta. That's my personal, my personal opinion. But um, we have done some projects with this paint on terracotta and it just goes on beautifully. 
Yeah. And it's great too, because they're so flexible. You can do them on round surfaces and it's really easy. All right. So um, just like somebody asked earlier, like um, what happens if you get paint around it? So as you can see here, the L, the edge of that design is kind of close to my surface. And I want to make sure I don't get any paint there. So I'm just going to put a little piece of tape there just to kind of block it off to make sure that um, the paint only goes where I want it to. So now, you know, this I'm, I'm more comfortable with. I can kind of be sure that I'm not going to get paint there. But if you wanted to, you could do that as well. You could just put some tape there and just kind of, you know, make it, I would say better safe than sorry. Um, so if you feel more comfortable doing this, just go ahead and stick some tape around the edges and that will make sure that we don't get any of this paint um, onto that area. Yeah. All right. So for this one, I think I'm going to use the squeegee. So you guys might be a little bit curious about this. This is probably one that if you are not used to using um, silk screens and things like that, you um, are probably curious about. So I'm going to grab the purple. This one is called, this is just lavender. So that's really pretty. And I'm going to get the squeegee. So we're going to put the paint on this sort um, on this angled side. Um, and this pack comes in, this is the smallest one. It comes in a small, a medium, and a larger size. So if you're doing like large designs, like big sign making, um, that large one will just cover lots of surface area. But I've got this tiny one here um, just because you have this nice tiny little design. So I'm going to apply some paint to the tip of my squeegee so you guys can see there. And then just like the brush, I'm going to pull down. So I'm just gonna keep adding paint as I go. I'm gonna pull down. And you can see it's, there's a little bit of like bumps between it because I've got the mesh stencils overlapped, but that's okay. You can just kind of go from side to side. Just wanna make sure that all of the design is covered with paint before you pull it up. And like, that's the great thing about these mesh stencils as opposed to traditional stencils. You don't have to worry as much about it bleeding underneath with this stencil. Right. You can see I'm really not being careful at all. I'm not using like a pouncing motion. I'm not using a dry brush with the kind of things that, you know, are really important when you're using traditional stencils. I'm just kind of like putting the paint on there. I'm keeping it thin. I don't want to like glob it on, um, but I'm not being terribly careful. So now I'm going to pull that whole thing up. And again, I'm just going to stick it right in my water because I do not want it to dry on there. And look at that right there. So it didn't bleed anywhere. You get nice crisp lines. Um, it's super opaque. It's not transparent at all. It's got amazing coverage and just, you know, think of all the different things you can do with this. They're just like the world is your oyster when it comes to this whole um, sign shop um, line of products at Michael's. Yeah. So someone had a great question a little while ago, Jesse. They wanted to know, could you use the stencil paste and the stencils um, over other paints? And they wanted to know specifically about um, folk art home decor chalk paint. Oh my gosh, you absolutely could. That's a great idea. So say you wanted to make a sign like this and paint it in white chalk paint and then use the beautiful colors to do your design over it. Those would work really well together. So like I said, these do come in larger tubes. So we have a larger tube of the white and black just because those are like the most popular colors and what people like to you know traditionally make signs with. Um, so you can absolutely base coat it in one of these. But if you're a big chalk paint fan, I know I am too. I, I absolutely love home decor chalk paint. Um, and you've got a lot of that hanging around, by all means, base coat your surfaces in chalk paint and then use these beautiful stencil creams um, to do your designs over them. That's a really great idea. All right, so let's do one more little project to show. This time we can show you guys how to use um, multiple colors in a project. So, so far we've only been using one color at a time, um, but I'm gonna grab, this is a really pretty little wood slice that we bought at Michael's. Again, Michael's has an amazing surface aisle. so. Um, you can just do the, you know, endless options there. You can get so many different shapes and sizes of surfaces there um, for sign making. They go really well with this product line. Mm -hmm. So Jesse, someone wanted to know um, if maybe you could showcase using multiple colors on a stencil. Here we go. That's what I'm about to do. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So I'm going to grab a new plate just to have a little bit more um, room to work. So I'm going to grab this one. It says love, sweet love. Um, it's a really cute design in our stencils. Again, we have tons and tons and tons of different designs. Look, we even have this like big, bold rainbow that looks like it was hand painted, but of course you don't have to worry about hand painting it. Um, they're just like tons of different, different kinds of um, styles and designs. So the first thing we're going to do, just like we've been doing is, you know, I've got a nice smooth surface. I'm going to, again, I could have base coated this. I just, I'm just trying to kind of show you the application. I'm going to pull my mesh stencil off and make sure it's pretty centered. And again, you can totally tape it off. 
So it's a little bit close to the edge. So I, I can go ahead and put some tape there just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. So I'll make sure I don't get any paint anywhere that I don't want it. And let's say we'll use, um, maybe we'll do like white to green. How does that sound? It's a little funky, but just to, just for um, demonstration purposes. Yeah. So I've got white there. Again, you can buy this big um, tube of the white because again, you're gonna be, might be using a lot of white. And then I'll use this really pretty, uh, this one's called bright green. Hey Jess, is there any way you could show us mixing some of the creams together? Some people sure. are looking forward to seeing how they blend together. Sure, okay, so let's do these two. So I've got the white and the green right here. So say you wanted to have like a nice paler green. Make sure this is, I'll get around this one's a little cleaner. So you would just grab some paint and if you're used to using a palette knife, it's kind of like that, but you can just blend them together on whatever sort of palette you're using. Again, you can use a brush if you're used to mixing with a brush instead, that's totally fine. Um, but just like any of our folk art acrylic paints, these mix together really beautifully. So they blend um, and they mix and like now we're getting this like really cute little minty color. That's really adorable for spring. In it's anticipation of St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, St. Patrick's Day, yeah, awesome. You could totally make signs for that, for any holiday using these um, packs of mesh stencils. Yeah, and we have a really great um, holiday pack that has like a bunch of traditional um, holiday colors and do, a yeah. old, uh, I don't have it up here, but yes, we do have a holiday pack. Yeah. And then Emily wanted to know um, with these creams, are you able to do an ombre design? Totally. So that's what I was actually going to show you guys is an ombre design. So I just want to show you, see how beautifully those mix together. So we have that nice minty green. So, you know, you can mix blue and red to get purple. You could mix, you know, any, any sort of color mixing you wanted to do. You can mix blue and yellow to get green. It's, it's you know, totally up to you. Uh, but you can see how well they blend together, just like any of our acrylic paints. So you got a little bit ahead of me. I am gonna show you guys how to do um, an ombre design and I'm going to do it um, right here on this one. I'm gonna use the green. So I'm kind of glad I have that now. I'll do the white um, to the dark green and I'll make sure to use that one we just mixed too. So I'm gonna start with the white and I got my silicone tip now here. So we've used the brushes and we've used um, the squeegees. And so now we're gonna use the sil silicone tip brush and I'm gonna pull down just like we've been doing. So nothing new here. And you don't wanna to do tons of paint. You know, you just want just enough paint to cover it. Of course, we don't wanna waste any paint, um, but just enough so you can see where the designs are getting filled in. That's all that really matters. Yeah, could you hold that up a little bit, Jess? It's kind of hard to see like, just cause the white is so pale. Yeah, so I've got um, the white and now I'm picking up some of that minty color that we just mixed. And I'm gonna kind of blend it in there. You're good now, Jess. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you hold that up. No, that's okay. I'm used to crafting, um, you know, like above my head for these micro yeah. classes. <laughs> I know I really want to show everybody the detail always. So I, I'm used to doing that. So I'm going to mix a little bit more of this light green. And I'm going to keep pulling that down. And then we're just going to kind of transition slowly into that darker green that's straight out of the tube. So again, I'm just pulling down. And again, you do want to work fairly quickly just because, you know, we really do not want the paint to dry in the mesh stencil. That's a that's definitely one way um, to, to sort of, you know, uh, heed your project, I guess, or hinder your project, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, so you just want to make sure that you work fairly quickly, but, you know, you don't have to, like, rush or anything like that. You can kind of take your time, make sure all the paint gets in there. Just You just want to make sure you have this pulled up before, we, um, up before the paint dries into the mesh stencil. Yeah. yeah. You can see I'm just, like, really gradually blending the greens together, and you can see I'm going over it multiple times. You can go over it it as many times as you need to get it as blended as you want. And like Jesse said, there's a bunch of different tools that come in this product line. And it's really just up to you, like what tool fits, um, you know, your... It's totally preference. Yeah. If you like the squeegee, you can use the squeegee. If you like the brush, if you like the slow cone tool, I like all of them. Um, so you can see I kind of switch back and forth depending on what I'm doing. But um, all right. So you can see we have this nice little blend going. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my tape. And this is a little bit bigger of a stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it to Dylan to stick in the sink for me. That's so pretty. Thank you so much. And you can see how here, how easy it was to blend it. So it's a little bit tricky to see the white, but you know, you can imagine if it was like blue to green or something, it's a nice, pretty ombre blend. Uh, and it was just super easy too. You can really see it where it says sweet there. Um, just super easy and really crisp lines. Like look at that detail. 
and there's no breaks in it. Like normally, like we've been saying, when you do a, a, a traditional stencil, there has to be breaks. That's what holds stencil together. But since this is a mesh stencil, that really fine mesh that mesh is holding it together, holding the design together, and you don't have to have any breaks in your detailed design. So just look at those like fine details. I just love it. I can't wait for everyone to like either go to michaels.com or go to their local michaels and see all the different designs that we carry because there's really something for everybody the the designs um vary in you know different aesthetics so much they're all super super adorable i know i know um so like we said guys make sure to check out your local michaels um in the next week or two it'll be in your local store and on michaels.com um so when you guys start making your signs make sure to let us know hashtag plaid crafts and hashtag make with Michael so we can see all of your beautiful designs. We cannot wait to see what you guys do with these. Um, there are just a million possibilities. Yeah. Um, also, and thank you to Michaels for um, having us in the new community classrooms. What'd you say, Anne? I was just gonna say also, if you really are excited about um, Folk Art Sign Shop and you wanna know more, we have a bunch of different Folk Art Sign Shop classes coming up um, with Michael's Community Classroom in the near future. So make sure to tune into those. If you have more questions or you're super excited about the line. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we just want to say thank you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're so excited. We hope you guys are excited too. Um, thank you again to Michael's Community Classrooms for having us. We love, love, love doing these classes on your channel. Um, we've got more classes coming up. Plaid does all kinds of great classes. We do Mod Podge and sign making and painting and all kinds of stuff. So make sure to look out for our classes on their calendar um, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.